Hi and welcome to Absolute Music. My name's Chris Calcutt from Focusrite Novation and I'm here with the guys at Absolute today to give them a good look at the brand new Novation Base Station 2 analog synth. As Novation as a company is 21 years old this year, we've decided to give ourselves a little present and we've brought out Base Station 2. The Base Station 2 is a fantastic sounding analog synth with two oscillators and a sub oscillator, analog filters and analog effects. It's also digitally controlled as well, so we can do things like store patches and sync our LFOs and that sort of thing. Let's delve right in and have a look at some of the key features on the bass station and see how we can use these to start to shape sounds and create sounds. So the bass station 2 is a two oscillator analog synth. We have completely analog oscillators, filter and effect section. But it's also digitally controlled. So this allows us to do things like store patches, recall patches, and also we can do other things such as syncing our LFOs to any external or internal clock. If you look at this section, we have the mixer. And at present, if I just bring this back to an initialized patch, we just get a sawtooth waveform. This is on oscillator one. Now, with each of the oscillators, we have four different waveforms. These include a sine wave, a triangle wave, a sawtooth, and also we have a square wave with variable pulse width. To be able to control oscillator one, I've got a switch here that lets me move to oscillator one. If I want to control oscillator two, I simply switch that over and I'm now controlling oscillator two. The controls for both oscillators are identical, so it makes it really easy to get used to navigating your way around the synth. As at the moment we're on a square wave, I can actually use this control to control the pulse width of that square wave. We have a manual setting, but we can also modulate that pulse width using either an LFO or a modulation envelope. If I switch to LFO2, and turn up an amount, I now can control the pulse width of this waveform using the LFO. If I then want to maybe control the pulse width using an envelope, I just simply switch over here, add an amount of the envelope, and then I can go to my envelope section and start to apply that to the pulse width as well. So alongside LFO1, we can also use the modulation envelope to control the oscillator pitch. Next to the modulation sources, we also have our tuning for the oscillator. We've got different ways to tune this. We have a range button to choose the octave that we're going to work in and we have a course control that lets me move um, an octave up and an octave down from the original pitch. We also have a fine control as well that lets us uh, tune the oscillator by a semitone each way. Alongside oscillator one, we also have a sub oscillator. And this lets us apply sub-oscillation uh, an octave below or two octaves below the pitch of oscillator one. So with the sub-oscillator, we have a choice of three different waveforms. We have a sine wave, we have a narrow band pulse width, and also a square wave. As I mentioned, we could go an octave or two octaves below oscillator one. So if we want to start to build up a sound, we can start with oscillator one here. Maybe bring in some sub oscillation. Bring in oscillator two, switch to oscillator two. And I'll just now fine tune this to give it a nice bit of thick chorus sound. A 
Again, on the mixer section, we also have another control which lets us control the volume for three different sources. I'll turn down the other oscillators and we'll have a listen to this. So if I switch this switch to noise, we have a white noise generator. If I switch it to ring, we have a ring modulation between oscillator one and two. We also have a third position for this switch, which is an external input. And this allows us to pass any signal that we want through the external input on the back of the base station. And that will then be fed through the filter section and through the effects section. This can be brilliant for plugging in things like guitars or microphones, or even just running samples through it to get some really nice modulation and filter style effects. Next to the mixer, we have our filter section. The base station two has two different distinct filters. The classic filter is modeled on the original base station. And it's what we call a variable state filter in that we can have it as a low pass filter, a band pass filter, or a high pass filter. On the classic filter, we also have two slopes. We have 24 dB per octave and 12 dB per octave. Alongside the classic filter, we've also put in a classic diode ladder filter, and we call this the acid filter. This is great for getting some really nice squelchy bass sounds. On the filter section, we also include an overdrive circuit. This is great for overdriving the oscillators going into the filter to get some really nice, warm, rich sounds. Alongside the overdrive circuit, we also can modulate the filter either via a modulation envelope again or through LFO2. We have two depth controls for those here. After the filter section, we also have some effects, and this includes a distortion circuit. Which we can get to, which we can use to get some really gnarly, nice distorted sounds. Next to the distortion, we also have the oscillator filter modulation. Oscillator filter modulation allows us to take oscillator two and actually control the cutoff frequency in the filter and the audio range, giving us an FM type sound. The base station has two types of modulation sources. We've got our envelope section and we have our LFO section. In the envelope section, we have four faders for attack, decay, sustain, release. And we have access via a switch to either our amplitude envelope, our modulation envelope, or if we switch down to the bottom, we can actually control both of them at one time. The amp envelope is gonna shape the overall sound of the uh, synth. But the modulation envelope can be used to be sent to different destinations, including the filter, pulse width, and also the pitch of the oscillator. Next to the envelope, we have our LFOs, or low frequency oscillators. These again can be used to modulate different aspects of the sound. LFO2 can be used to control the filter and the pulse width of the uh, pulse width waveform. And LFO1 can be used to control the pitch of the oscillator. Let's have a listen to LFO2 controlling the filter. With the LFO, we can change the speed of the oscillation. If we 
turn the LFO control clockwise, we can go incredibly fast into the audio range. Again, this is great for getting crazy synth effect sounds. <laughs> On the LFO, we have four different waveforms that we can choose from. So we have a triangle waveform. We have a sawtooth. We have a, a square wave. We also have sample and hold. Again, on the LFOs, we have additional functionality that can be reached by using the function key and the LFO section on the keyboard. For example, with the waveforms, we can actually use a feature called LFO slew to round off the corners of the waveforms. Here is a square wave on the filter. And if I now switch on LFO slew, We can hear it actually affecting the shape of the low frequency oscillator. This is a great feature to be able to create your own custom waveform shapes. Alongside the LFO slew, we also have controls for the LFO speed and sync. When the LFO is set to speed, Effectively, the LFO control is free running and we have a full range of LFO control. If I set it to sync, the LFO will now run in, uh, in synced increments. So we can have, for example, here fourth notes or quarter notes, four triplets or quarter triplets, all the way up to 30 second triplets. And if we run all the way down, we can actually achieve 64 bars of LFO control. Next to the envelope section, we have the LFO section. We have two separate LFOs, and LFO1 can be used to control the pitch of the oscillators. LFO2 can be sent to control the cutoff frequency on the filter, and also it can be used to modulate the pulse width in the oscillator. Let's have a listen to LFO2 controlling the filter. <laughs> You'll see that we have a dial here which allows me to control the speed of the oscillator and if we turn it fully anti-clockwise, it'll effectively turn the LFO off. If we turn it clockwise, we can go right into the audio range and get some really crazy synth effect sounds. <laughs> We can also use the switch here as a delay control for the LFO. I'm going to switch my waveform through to a square wave. And I'm going to increase the delay. This will now place a pre-delay before the LFO opens to its full extent. Both of the LFOs have four different waveforms that we can use. We have a triangle wave, a sawtooth, a square wave, we also have sample and hold. We have additional LFO control on the keyboard. By using the function key and choosing the correct key on the keyboard, we can go to different controls in the synth engine. We're going to have a listen to LFO2 controlling the filter, but we're going to use LFO slew. This will effectively round off the edges, allowing you to make custom waveforms for the low frequency oscillators. We're going to listen to LFO2 in a square wave shape controlling the filter, and then we're going to round off the edges to see how that affects the sound. 
Other controls for the LFO is the ability to actually sync to any external clock or internal clock that's being generated through the base station. We can reach this by going to function and speed sync. If we turn this on now, rather than just having a value on the LFO control, you can see we now have a cryptic description giving us different uh, synchronized uh, uh, beats. For example, we're set here to four notes or quarter notes. Then we have 4T for four triplets, eighth notes, 16D for, uh, for dotted sixteenths, and that goes all the way up to 32 triplets. If we take the LFO all the way down, we can actually achieve LFO speeds of 64 bars, which is an incredibly long time. The final control for the LFO is the key sync. Every time I trigger a key on the keyboard, it's going to start the LFO at that point. But I can disconnect that from the keyboard so that the LFO is free running. This means it doesn't matter where I trigger the note, it will always pick up at that position in the LFO. This is with uh, key sync turned on. This is now turned off. Next to the LFO section, we have our portamento section. This allows us to glide between notes as we're playing. Finally, on the top panel, we have a really, really well configured arpeggiator. The arpeggiator can be used to generate standard arpeggios such as up, down, up and down. We have a second up and down option which repeats the first and the last note. Let's have a quick listen. <laughs> We also have a played option in the arpeggiator. This allows me to actually play the order of the notes in so I can create a small sequence of a combination of notes that I choose. We also have an octave range for the arpeggiator we can go up to four octaves with it. And alongside that, we have 32 different rhythms that we can apply to the arpeggio as well. This is great for getting some more rhythmic phrases with the arpeggios that you're playing. Fully clockwise, this will give us sixteenth notes. Again, if we turn anti-clockwise, this will give us quarter notes for the arpeggio. Alongside the arpeggiator, we also have a step sequencer. We can easily record in by choosing the record function on the arpeggio control. And then I can just simply tap in the notes that I want to go onto the 32 steps that I have available. When I've typed, uh, tapped in my uh, sequence, I can just simply move to play, make sure the arpeggiator's turned on, and then trigger this across the keyboard, uh, playing the original sequence that I've just created. four separate slots that allow me to save up to four of these sequences in the base station itself. I'm now going to record into step sequencer slot two, but this time I'm going to make use of the legato and the rest function. Legato will let me tie notes over to the next note. 
so we can create longer sustained notes. And rests will put a space in instead of a note on the step. This is really useful for building up rhythmic sequences. So, If I go to play now, you'll hear that we're going to trigger that sequence with the additional uh, rests and legato. you also notice that we're triggering each of those steps at the moment, and that's because we have a trigger section over here. This is currently set to multi, which means it's going to repeat each of the attacks on the step. But if I move that to single, you'll see now that we have sustained notes. Using the latch button is a really great way of just holding that sequence and let it play whilst you can then get your hands on onto the controls on the synth and really start to play around with the actual sound. So as you can see we've got a heck of a lot of control on the top panel of the bass station itself. All the key features you would expect on a synth are there within easy reach. But we have additional functionality on the synth also. And this is achieved by using the function button and the relevant key on the keyboard. For example, if I want to change the pitch bend range, I press function and pitch bend, and I can change that value using the value keys underneath the LED screen. On the key bed, we have a number of different functions, including being able to assign different parameters to aftertouch. The keyboard itself has individually sprung keys, which give it a really nice old synth feel but the addition of aftertouch makes it a very powerful control as well. At present, this sound is opening up the filter when I push down with the aftertouch, and it's also speeding up the LFO rate controlling the filter. Let's just play around with some of those settings. I'm going to open up the filter a little more. I'll also increase the speed a little. The aftertouch can control three separate parameters at the same time. We have the filter frequency, the LFO2 speed, but we can also use LFO1 to control the oscillator pitch. This will give us a nice sort of vibrato sound. Alongside using aftertouch to control the parameters of the synth, we can also assign different destinations to the modulation wheel here. We can assign LFO2 to the filter frequency, we can assign LFO1 to oscillator pitch, a bit like a vibrato control, and we can also use the modulation wheel to control the pitch of oscillator 2. Using the mod wheel to control the pitch of oscillator 2 can be really useful if we want to hard sync the two oscillators. To turn on hard sync, we effectively press function, oscillator 1, 2, sync, and turn that on. I'll also apply some modulation to os uh, the modulation wheel to oscillator 2 pitch. In this instance, I'm controlling the pitch of oscillator 2, but in effect, that's actually affecting and shaping the sound of oscillator 1. We've also got a little bit of modulation, which is adding vibrato to the sound. Other functions that we find on the keyboard are the ability to apply swing to our, our arpeggio. We ha also have a limiter built in, so that allows us to just make sure that we're not going to blow our speakers if we're making some crazy sounds. 
We also have global control for things such as MIDI channels, we have local on and off, we have a global tuning, we have the ability to dump and dump all patches via a SysX uh, librarian or editor, and we also have the control for input gain, which allows us to attenuate the signal that comes in through the external input. So there we have it, the Base Station 2, an incredibly powerful analog synth. You can create fantastic fat bass sounds, incredible searing lead sounds, and it also is great for arpeggiated sounds too. The Base Station 2 can be powered via its USB connection at the back, and we'll also send MIDI over USB, but we've also included MIDI in and out if you want to connect to any other external MIDI devices. Interestingly, on certain controls, we, ha we can actually send out different CC messages. For example, in the envelope section, if I switch my uh, envelope to amp envelope, this sends out a CC message. If I move down to modulation envelope, this sends out a separate CC message. If I move down to amp and mod combined, this will actually send out the two CC messages together, a bit like a macro control for your software. So there's the base station two. The original base station, as I say, is 20 years old. Here we have Joe's own uh, uh, base station rack unit. And this, as I say, was one of the most requested reissues. So here, base station two has arrived, and we've taken all the features from base station, the original base station, and brought them into 2013 and added a whole lot more. If you want any more information about base station two, have a chat with the guys at Absolute Music or visit www.absolutemusic.co.uk. Thanks very much for watching.